In the last episode of my series on the renovation of my 1813 ship captain's home, I showed you some of the vast history of the house and the lovely village of Marion where the home is located. We started the process of planning and designing and began discussing demolition with Longfellow Design Build. Since then, we've begun the demolition and rough framing. Things are heating up. Home Life and Style is brought to you by The Pine Hills, offering inspired new homes and daily adventures just 45 minutes from Boston. Snow and Jones, a fixture in New England homes since 1952. Classic Tile and Stone, your tile and stone destination. Vineyard Home, elements for a fine home, including fireplace, music, video, and automation. And South Peak, your ultimate four-season resort on Loon Mountain. Hi, I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. <laughs> I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. This is the second of the eight-part series on the renovation of my 1813 ship captain's home. In this episode, we get right to work cleaning up the outside of the house. We begin the rough framing and demo, look at the windows with the experts from Mid Cape Home Centers, meet local woodworkers J&J, &J, start the tile process with classic tile and stone, and talk to local historians and commissioners about the town of Marion and the history of my home. Let's go. To give the home a better appearance right away, we had the shingles power washed. Someday we'll replace the shingles, but at this point, they were in good enough condition to just clean them up. When we first bought the home, the roof was leaking. So one of the first things we did was replace the roof. So a beautiful October day, and uh, Cam and I walked over from the house that we're renting uh, to look at the roof, check it out. Um, they're gonna get this done in two days, which is amazing. These guys are fast. This is the fourth project that we've done with them. And uh, they've got a team up on the roof. They've got a team on the ground. Um, it's windy today, so all these little pieces are flying around, but as fast as they fly on the ground, they get a wheelbarrow to bring it right to the dumpster. Yeah, so we chose to go with a black architectural shingle and uh, starting to look really good. It's gonna go with the windows where we're gonna have the, the windows that are gonna be black and we're gonna paint the front door black, I'm pretty sure. So uh, it's gonna look really nice if they look great with the power wash and the house is just coming along. Next was to remove the old shrubbery out front to make way for the fencing we planned on adding and plant privets to define the yard. The deck and the attached ramp were in very poor condition, but good enough to use, so we decided to leave it all for now to ease getting all the lumber and building materials in and out of the house. The old ramp would become invaluable during the renovation process.
Need a fresh, new look for your kitchen or bath? Snow and Jones can help you get there. We've been located on the South Shore in Cape Cod since 1952 as a family business, so it's given us a long time to establish roots and a good reputation. We really try to train our people on style and design as well as the technical aspect because missing one or the other can really throw everything off. So uh, they have great insight. We really can take all those pieces together and create that full project. Start your Snow and Jones project today. We had our exploratory demo meetup with the Longfellow Design Build team. And then the demolition began, first in the kitchen and mudroom. Super excited that we're starting the project today. Today is day one. You've seen I've had been here a few different times, kind of scooping it out, buying it, getting all of that done. And now we're starting day one of the demo. The team from Longfellow's here, the cabinets have to go. They've, they've prepped all the other rooms, putting up the sheets, the zipper, they keep everything the dust out, the floor's protected, and they've done all that prep work. And now the team is going at it. On this day, I was meeting the team from Longfellow Design Build, Mark, the owner, and general contractor, Kevin, to discuss the next steps and look at the demolition progress made so far. Basically, the whole kitchen, powder room, and mudroom had to be gutted. We had decided to tear down the pantry and the small room adjacent to it to expand the original U-shaped kitchen into a more workable space. The demolition of the pantry turned out to be quite exciting. Seeing the age of the wood, gives you the character of this house. Yeah, now you can see the mix of the new LBLs with the old traditional timbers. Exactly. Yeah, we got a guy, guy in town is going to make us a piece of furniture or something interesting out of some of these old pieces. We couldn't let them go into the dumpster. Oh, They're, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's why this awesome. has a lot of great character. Yeah, this is this is a really nice kitchen now. Yeah, it's so much. Yeah, that than little. What you have. <laughs> well, what's also fun is right now it's bright in here with a plywood wall. Right. This is all going to be wide open right. from the outside. So right. I can see where they put that other header in for that yep. large door. Yeah, and Midcape's got the um, the Marvin uh, bifold doors going yep. in there. So it's going to be in, out, and bright. Let's take a walk through the rest of the house. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, see the doorway's been open. So now the fireplace doesn't feel so squishy. No, Do you remember that old better. doorway? It was so tight before. You can see the much better than that. Yeah. Right. Do you think we'll be able to, to, to darken the color? Of the I was actually going to suggest that. So. When we're trying to patch an old floor, yeah. and you have some new, some that haven't been finished, yeah. by putting a darker stain on it, it will hide a lot of the sins or the stains or different things that have happened over the last hundred plus years. Right. Um, so I think that's a great idea. And Maybe we'll we can show some from the bathroom too. Yep. Yeah. Um, you've done a great job keeping the project going, knowing that we don't have all the windows, we don't have all the material based off lead time. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Fe I'm not feeling it from your team that the lead time is. is I, I, if you're feeling real pain, I can't feel it here. No. Every time we come over, there's something new to look yeah, at. Yeah, there's itself. a lot of work to do, so I think we pulled the trigger on the windows at the right time. If yeah. we waited any longer, then there might have been a little bit of a fall. Ah. We're in a good spot. All of our project managers are doing great keeping projects going, even while you're waiting on what would have been a four-week lead time might be 14 or 16 or 18. The key is working on other aspects of the house, so when they do come in, then everything else is ready. Yeah. Great, let's head yep. back down. After seeing the pantry demo and the gorgeous old wood, I called in Marion Woodworking Team John and Judy. John had been creating beautiful custom pieces in the area for more than a decade. Their shop is called J&J &J Woodworking. They are the nicest people and so talented. I invited them to the house to see if we could use the beautiful old pantry wood for the wet bar we were creating. 
John was clearly excited about the age of the wood and ready and willing to turn it into a gorgeous live edge countertop for us. So I'm just admiring the old structure underneath the, the building. You live for that, right? I do. I like the stuff that's hidden and not the stuff that you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, because we're all open and exposed yeah. here for the most part, right? So, yeah, so let me just, let me just show you into here. But I just thought those were gorgeous. They are. So yeah, we could do something, definitely something creative. Something. I mean, I mean, we could do like open shelves in that kitchen, but mm -hmm. is that kind of boring? I don't know. So we're gonna put a wet bar here, uh, a built-in wet bar. Yeah. So maybe you could do something kind of cool incorporated into yeah. here. There you go. Maybe the maybe the surface of the wet bar, bar would be cool. Yep. Um, uh, and it would be nice as as you walk in, you know. That would be. Yes, yeah. Kind of really. Statement. Right. But. Lots of possibilities then. So yes. at least we got a good find with three of yep. the pieces. Yep. They're definitely something we could make stand out in your house. So. It's cool, right? Yep. And I would just love to, to not put these in the dumpster or do anything with them. But Well, you put them in the dumpster, I'll be in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I would never put them in the dumpster. I've worked with Christian and Julie for about seven years now and about 30 projects. They care as much as I do about the finished product. And every time I walk in, I'm always like, girls, what do we have new? And they always have things set aside to show me. And it's, every time I go there, it's so exciting. They text me pictures as soon as tile comes in that they think is really exciting. Like, uh, even on a Saturday, I'll get a text. And they'll know that I'm just as excited to see it as they are to share it. And so they're, they're my go-to. Recognized and respected. Classic tile and stone on Boston's South Shore. At Longfellow, we have a constant need for quality materials and supplies. Knowing Mid-Cape can commit their best to us means we can commit our best to our customers every time. Next on my list was meeting with Mid-Cape Home Centers to talk windows and doors. I wanted to replace the windows and change the exterior to black. I knew I wanted to paint the front door black, and I thought black windows would contrast nicely against the granite and shingles. Plus, the windows needed replacing. I knew I was in good hands with Mid-Cape Home Centers. There they are. Hi there, I'm well. Jonathan, nice, nice to meet you, you, Parker. Parker, Derek Parker's at Midcape. Nice to How meet you, you guys. How was the drive? Yeah, not bad. Marion's a great town to come to. It's sure. pretty, it's isn't it? So what's the first step that you do? Um, well, I, I think what we should do, just to kind of get a feel for what windows we're actually dealing with. Although they're all probably, the great thing about window manufacturers like Marvin, they know that they're going in homes like this. So they have a standard breadth of product size-wise. And it's likely that one of those sizes will fit in each one of these openings. Oh, good. However, <laughs> I say that However, with a caveat. This yeah. is, as I mentioned, the balloon framing. It depends how close posts are in between the walls. Uh, it's likely that we can match a, a specific size to what you have, but it's something we have to watch out for in the measuring process. Yeah, so. okay. What I'm really trying to do is get a little bit of the historic part. They don't have a historical, uh, they have a historical society here, Sipakan Historical yeah. Society, but they have no historic district ah. and they have no named homes with plaques like some uh, historic right. home uh, towns have. And um, and they don't have any real like rules in terms of... Oh, so you're not required so we don't, to duplicate. No. Huh. That's We're not to required me. to, but I would say we, wanted, we yeah. want to, to yeah. bring back the, the majesty of this home as it really was when it was a ship captain's home. Right. So this is where I want to have the door. Let in a lot of light in the kitchen. So I'm not going to replace or have new windows installed. And I want to have a door here, but I want a big door. So I kind of want to know. So let's see what we have. For yeah, how, how big do you think I can go? You can't go wall to wall, right? You no, to you got to, yeah, good point. So you have 11 foot uh, eight, essentially. 
So there we have what, the 10-foot bipartite slider. Mm -hmm. So that's a door that is four panels. Okay. The center two go out, um, opposing each other. And then you have a nice big opening. Yeah, those are cool. So it's, Crystal, your team is amazing. Thank you, they are really great. Yeah, Derek and Jonathan, and uh, we went around the entire house. Good. And I feel like I'm a window expert. No, not I really. Don't. Not they, compared to they, Marvin, they... and not compared to you guys. No, I'm not. But I do know some new terms. Good. I feel like I'm a little educated. Very interesting project, too. Yeah, I'm excited that you guys are on board and that uh, Longfellow introduced us. I yes. think it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see the windows because I know what you guys do, 125 years <laughs> of of amazing. It's is a long it, history. Yeah, yeah, it is. That it's just going to be um, a wonderful home in the community. While the demolition continued, I started working on my favorite part of any project, interior design. I called Kristen and Julie, the owners of Classic Tile and Stone. I went to their shop in Hingham to show them the plans, and then we made a site visit. They were eager to see the house for themselves and talk about the work ahead of us. Okay, so All right. do you know what, do you remember from the plans which I room do. is the bathroom? Yes. The bathroom? Yes. It's gonna be the laundry room. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I was thinking the like gray the, the gray and the white checkerboard or something like that. Okay. Like an antique model could be really pretty. Oh yeah. Well, um, I was you'll see down uh, stairs in the front door. I was thinking maybe that space for, for what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I have seen the gray, and it's a little less less uh, it's jarring, right? It's yes, a little softer. exactly. A little so bit softer, but still like a charcoal gray. That's an antique finish. Yes. With the edge of the house. Yes. This really is where gray. I was thinking the black and the, white. But yeah. Gray and white. Like a real charcoal gray, I think. Mm -hmm. Pretty. And still the. the it's still in the yeah, in the checkerboard. Well, that just with the white. It looks beautiful. Stunning. It'll be perfect. And what yeah. a what a beautiful entry. Then you can actually Very have bright. people come in here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. You know, it's not a split level. It's right, just, right. You know, oh, mm -hmm. you come in and, and you go upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for coming all the way out. Thank you for having us. That drive. It was no. so great to see it. Great drive. Yeah, what are your thoughts? I think the house is fantastic. I think yeah. it's going to be amazing. It just, you know, you just find the one and you think, I can see it. Well, I'll see you back at the Excellent. shop some other yeah. time. Okay, sounds great. Sounds All good. right, thanks for coming. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. Bye. 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 Gotta go back into my <laughs> <laughs> my project. After Kristen, Julie, and I toured the home, we made an appointment to meet back at their shop in Hingham to begin choosing the tile. With the large kitchen, wet bar, mudroom, foyer, and four bathrooms, we had a big job. The Marion Historical Commission was established for the primary purpose of identifying and protecting the town's historic resources, and that includes historic homes like ours. I met up with Commission Chair Meg Steinberg to learn more. It's so, it was so nice to see you here, Meg. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for uh, coming out so early just to talk about this. I know you're a bevy of information about the home. So can you speak about 1813? You know, well, 1813 was, <laughs> was probably pretty much the peak of development in Marion. There were a lot of uh, shipbuilding and um, shipping activities on the wharfs. There are a lot of the construction of the homes that we're identifying now in the survey are from the period uh, 1780 to 1850. Um, that's when a lot of the building went on. So there are the um, early Georgian style houses, and then there are a lot of these Cape houses in federal style, and then a lot of Greek revival in the later years of that period. Um, and this house shows to be it, that it was a very fine federal style cottage. It doesn't have a center chimney. It has two end chimneys, which generally was a symbol of greater um, standing. Oh, really? Yeah, there was some nice level of detail in this house, you know, when it was designed. It was important, it was stately, it was meant to be noticed, I guess you would yeah. say. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a journey so far, just uncovering it. I hope the, the captain would 
give us a little nod from wherever he is right now. <laughs> I'm sure he would. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. After visiting the Historical Society and chatting with Meg, Commission Chair, I went to visit Judith Rosby. Judy Rosby is an avid Marian historian and author. She has written six local history books on Marian. Her knowledge and her writings are a great asset to the town. I had the opportunity to visit her in her beautiful home. I knew if I wanted more history about the town and how my home fits in, Judy was the person to talk to. Judy, thank you. You're welcome. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. And your home is beautiful. Thank you. So we're here to talk about um, my new home, which is a historic home, mm -hmm. and the town of Marion. I mm -hmm. want to talk about the history and also your home. I have to, I have to at least ask you a little bit about your home because this is it's it's exquisite, honestly, right? Thank you. Can you tell me a little history about about your home and your uh, relationship to the historical society? Sure, I'll start with the home first. Yeah. Um, the home uh, started out as a farmhouse. And that back part of the house was built in 1840. And that's the house that Grover Cleveland rented for two summers. He's our only president who has served two non-consecutive terms. Oh, right. So in between his four, his, the four years between his two terms, he summered in Marion. So the house it was put on the National Register of Historic Homes because, A, it's a classic shingle style home and it's lucky too in that it has a barn in the back which is still intact. A lot of these homes they changed things and got rid of outbuildings and then it has a little pump house in the back that's still uh, authentic from that time. And then with the history it qualified and I'm hoping that more and more houses in Marion will be put on the National Register because Marion is probably one of the oldest towns in the United States. I haven't become exactly named as the town historian, but I've done uh, a lot of research and have really enjoyed it. And I've actually written these six books. <laughs> I love these. On, I love these these town books. And the first one was great. in 1999. We had just had a survey done at the Historical Society, uh, which is a precursor that you have to have done um, before you can nominate houses for the National Register or nominate whole streets to be on the National Register. Mm -hmm. the, the person that wrote the, uh, or did the survey, would do it in the form of the Department of Interior, which um, is quite technical. So I would take one house a week and preview it with a photograph in the local newspaper. Mm -hmm. And people loved it so much, they said, well, you should make a book out of it. So that's what this first book is. Excellent. It's um, not all of the historical houses, but many of the important ones right. in town. And now is, is 113 Front Street in that one? Yes, it is. That's very good. Yes. And 113 has a lot of history in it. I guess you've heard of Elizabeth Tabor. Well, her brother is the one that owned that house, John Pitcher, and he was a sea captain. And when he died, John Pitcher, he... Um, donated the house to the Congregational Church. And for many years, it was the Congregational Church um, parsonage. They sold it. And at one time, the uh, Sipican Sentinel magazine or newspaper started there, I think in the basement part of it. And uh, a man named Larry Pangaro um, started this newspaper, which became very successful. And now it's bought out by, I think, a, a paper in Plymouth. But Anyway, he sold it to St. Rita's as their rectory, and they held it for many years. And um, they're the ones you bought it from, right? Right. So mm -hmm. a, a family home, and then a, a church home, and mm -hmm. then a family home, and then a church home, and right. then a family home again. Right. It's a very interesting history. Um, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. And uh, you know, people who want to know about the Mary Celeste can watch that episode or come to the right. Historical Society, and because there's just so many stories here, so many great stories. Thanks so much, Judy. You're welcome. Tune in next time when we choose tile with classic tile and stone, choose vanities and fixtures with Snow and Jones, visit surroundings at the river shops to get ahead of the interiors, and visit Mid Cape Home Centers to choose windows and doors.